Are any of you, would you describe yourselves as wonder junkies? Totally. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah, I yeah. would. Yeah? For sure. <laughs> how, how so? Well, I mean, I, I'm always curious about the cause of things. I'm sitting around looking at things and asking questions, and um, I just want to know how things work. I mean, again, it's Feynman's pleasure of figuring things out, and that sort of curiosity has uh, been definitely a defining characteristic even of humans as a whole, right? I mean, we have the curiosity that other animals do not, and we have the intellectual capability uh, to answer questions about our very origins, and we have the, you know, the opposable thumb with which to help build machines that will help us answer those questions. Okay, but, but I, I want to know, know about, I know oh, about me you. me personally, yeah. okay, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm asking questions all the time, but um, one of the main questions that I and a number of my colleagues wanted to answer was what will be the fate of our universe? Will it continue to expand forever or will it um, revert back? You know, kind of here's the apple again, like that kind of a thing, you know. <laughs> Apples are very useful for demos, very simple demos, and you can eat them afterward. You know, so I could launch this apple at a speed greater than the escape speed of Earth, and if there weren't the technical difficulty of a ceiling here, you know, with a speed of more than 11 kilometers per second, it would keep on going away from Earth forever, always slowing down, but continuing to go forever. So in a similar way, the universe could expand for a while and collapse in on itself, or it could expand forever. And we wanted to know which of these will be the case in trillions of years. Not that it will help create a better toaster or anything like that, nothing practical, but just to satisfy our curiosity, our sense of wonder about the fate of the universe. And to make a long story short, our measurements um, indicated that, in fact, our universe is currently speeding up in its expansion. It's accelerating. So it was like A, B, or none of the above, right? <laughs> uh, static universe A, B, C, or none of the above. And, and it was none of the above, and that was just a, a real thrill to discover. But it was driven entirely by this sense of curiosity about the fate of the universe, which in turn had been um, fed by the wonder about the expansion of the universe as a whole, right? I mean, expanding universe, who would have even thought about that, right? The universe seems static. And indeed, most physicists thought that for the longest of times. But it's expanding, Hubble discovered that, and, and the expansion is accelerating. Who would have thought that? Now, it's the dark energy that's causing it, but that just, then just explains one observed fact, the accelerating expansion of the universe with this, this new wonderful thing. What, what the hell is dark energy? You know, <laughs> right. what, what produced it? What causes it? What will become of it in the future? Will it continue to be repulsive, et cetera, et cetera? So new questions come about. No, it's I, a never-ending process. I right? read somewhere that you have also chased after a lot of solar eclipses. Oh, my God. Solar eclipses, right? I know exactly what produces them, but my wife can attest to this, right? We, we go chasing after them. How, how many have you seen? I've been to 17 total solar eclipses. And, you know, on average, one will come visit you every 380 years. And I see Stephanie and Barbara here. Hi there, from our August 2017 trip that my wife and I organized. It's, you know... Wait, know so how, how far have you gone to see a solar eclipse? All the way around the world, basically, to the other side of the world, sure. And and it's just as awe-inspiring and wonderful, even though I know exactly what causes it. But still, you see the solar corona and the diamond ring effect and the changing temperatures and it all just... They're not just all the same experience? No, 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 it's not. And and because I know that it's not some dragon devouring the sun or or the gods angry with us... You know, and we beat pots and pans. That's what they used to do. And guess what? It worked every time, right? <laughs> the, the sun would reappear. So it's a, don't argue with success. But we now know that's not something that worked because of what they did. It was the wrong explanation to begin with. But all that understanding, in my mind, does not at all detract from my experience. I'm a total solar. I'm a total total solar eclipse junkie, and that's almost you know synonymous with my being a wonder junkie.